What's going on everybody? My name is John Hammond. Welcome back to the YouTube video. Still looking at the Rice Tea Cat Panda CTF. I want to solve a few more of the challenges in the cryptography section. This one is Don't Give the Giant a Cookie. It has a long challenge prompt and description, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. I don't really know why Giant and Cookie, or Cook and Cookie, are having to be capitalized. The view hint doesn't particularly give you much of a hint. It just tells you to put it in the proper flag format. Okay. Uh, what we're given here is just... A string of numbers and looks like hexadecimal numbers. Uh, I had to go ahead and bang my head against the wall of this for a while, but as it turns out, this is exactly 32 characters in length. So if you check that out, that means maybe this is a hash. Uh, what I went to go ahead and do was to see if I could crack that hash. Got a little crack station online, simple online hash cracking utility. Tell them I'm not a robot, which is still up for debate, but this result here after it has cracked that hash is chocolate. Mmm. And that is literally the flag. That's literally all that you need to submit. There I go. It's uh, RTCP in that proper flag format. That's that. That's literally the solution to that challenge. Just that hash in the challenge description. You wouldn't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, the next challenge is challenge title 15. And this has a lot of interesting information that is seemingly all garbage and nonsense. Um, it looks like they're all English letters. So that is a plus. Down at the very, very bottom, we have what looks like to be the flag. You can tell by kind of the opening and closing curly braces and the four letters at the start. But we don't know how this might be encoded or how it's translating some text to the ciphertext supposedly here. Um, because this looks like English, and because, at least we know they're English letters, and because there's so much of it, what we can do is we can try and crack that as a substitution cipher. An awesome tool to do this is quipquip.com. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this. I'll bring it to quipquip.com, Q-U-I-P-Q-I-U-P. -Q we'll go ahead and paste that all in there, hit solve, and you've probably seen me cover that in tons of other videos. It's not a heavy lift. Uh, that's really just the criteria that you have to fill, is if you know, hey, there's a lot of text, it looks like it's using English uh, letters, and it at least could very well be English, you can use this and solve that challenge. This one says it's RTCP, careful with EXIF data in some cool leet speak. So let's go ahead and close those tabs. We could go ahead and submit that, and that is the flag for that challenge. Next one I want to show you is Notice Me Senpai. Um, this has significantly less solves than the others, and it was a little bit obscure. All they said was, ooh, woo, Senpai placed this note on my desk before class, but I, I don't really want to do this voice, so I'm not going to. Uh, it gives you seemingly the flag kind of scrambled, though. And it looks like, it's, it's almost like an anagram, right? Where the letters are all misplaced to make something new. And what we need to do is figure out how this could translate to an actual flag. So I didn't particularly know what to do. So I went ahead and went to my little Katana checklist. And this is just a document, ctf-katana, uh, on my GitHub repository. And I have here just a listing of things that we could potentially do given a category in a capsule flag challenge. So I would search for cryptography, and I would literally open up all of these links that I have here, all these uh, references and materials that I could go to and try and figure out which of these things could it potentially be. It could be a Caesar cipher, it could be an Atpash cipher, it could be Veneer, Gronsfield, etc., etc., etc. Eventually, I kind of got down to the Rail Fence cipher, and of course, Quip Grip was in there, the Playfair cipher, etc., etc. So, eventually, I got to this being a Rail Fence cipher. And I was just kind of fumbling around with some of the text in here. Uh, you change this checkbox or this drop down menu to decrypt. You can paste in your message and then you could kind of finagle it to see how it will manipulate this cipher text. You can specify an offset here or the number of rows. Uh, I kept accidentally breaking this website because if you try and remove the number of rails and then add a new rail back in or a new number, the message down there hasn't really changed. It says you have to supply at least two rails. So I would have to refresh the page every time I did that. Uh, I would actually just as a stupid hack, I would enter the number that I want after it and then remove the previous one. So eventually I got up to like the number six and I thought this was weird because as I noticed that I saw, whoa, 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 this looks like potential. This looks like something that I haven't seen before. I thought I could read out of the elite speak nonsense. I'm in with, with, this looks like a with and then your mom, but 
it still wasn't right. It didn't have the flag format properly there, but it looked really, really close. So I actually, as I was manually solving this, just kind of stuck on it and tweaked the offset. I would bring this up to like one or two, and I kept incrementing this until I saw something new or could kind of understand what the lead speak was or where the proper letters that were replaced with numbers might be. Eventually, 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 I got up to nine, and that had the proper flag. So that's that. That's how I solved it. That was my methodology. When I didn't know what the heck to do with this, I kind of just went back to my notes and my checklist, my archive of things that I've seen on other CTFs. And that CTF hyphen katana is available if you would like to see it. Um, well, that's all cool and all. I do want to show you the actual tool katana. So let me bring that down here and we can work with it. Because I have been using that a little bit and now that it kind of has a little bit more support for that rail fence cipher, you could use that just as well. Um, let's go ahead and activate the virtual environment for it and uh, it has all these INI files for other CTFs that you might go ahead and configure your use with um, Katana with. So what I'm going to do is actually going to go ahead and create one for Rice TCAP Panda INI and let's go ahead and modify this uh, dot INI. So I'm going to create an output directory. I'll just call it RTCP. We'll download files if we see any. We'll specify the proper flag format for this specific CTF. I'll call mine RTCP, just that flag format that we've seen. And that's using regular expressions, right? As much as it can gather inside of those curly braces. It is hosted with CTFD, and we are using the URL for the CTF, which is HTTPS Rice T Cat Panda WTF. And I'll use a login for... A Discord account, a usual password just for fun, um, and then we don't need to particularly auto-submit in this case, but I want to show you what we're going to end up working with. What I can do now is that I've created that is I can run Katana, I'll go ahead and tac tac for so I'll remove the results directory wherever we save things in, and I'll use the configuration file for that rtcp.ini file that I just created. Now Katana will be ready and willing to work with me. And what I can do is I can type in CTF list, and it will automatically pull down all of the challenges for the CTF uh, in a kind of situation and the status that I could work with within Katana. This is cool. This is cool new functionality and features here. So we just saw 15 Q. Uh, that was the quip quip one. So let me go ahead and CTF uh, show that number. CTF show 37 is the ID for that. And you could literally get the challenge prompt for this. And then if you wanted to, you could add it to a target or create or queue that up with maybe a file that that challenge includes. You could download or the description. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that with um, our one that we're showcasing just now. Let me uh, get to CTF list to see all those again. Uh, that one was called Notice Me Senpai, so that's ID number 62. Let's use CTF show 62. And here is that challenge prompt, and we could go ahead and queue it. Uh, what I'll show you is how you can queue the whole description, but that kind of spirals to insanity. Um, so let's go ahead and CTF queue 62. It will go ahead and queue nothing because there was no file to download with it. What CTF queue can do is it can actually include the description if the worthwhile information is part of that challenge prompt and not given in a file or something to ask it with. So let me go ahead and do that with tac D or tac tac description in that case. Now you can see there are a lot of units just spiraling off to go work and do their thing. Um, I think this gets stuck in Caesar 255 for like a long, long time. Uh, maybe eventually that will go ahead and solve it for us. So let's actually just create a new terminal down here so I can show you it working in might have a, a more tighter way. Let's. Uh, Again, turn on the virtual environment source and bin, activate. And now I won't do that in the interp in interpretive way. I'll go ahead and use Python tac m katana tac tac force. I'm going to specify the flag format as RTCP just with command line arguments, and I'll go ahead and give it this uh, string here. So let's go ahead and specify that is what we're going to use as our target. And it will take Katana a little bit of time to work through this. Uh, not as much time as it's spiraling to 255, but it should be able to get it to for us in a couple seconds. Let me say that with my fingers crossed. Okay, there, there we go. Now it tracked down rail fence with the proper uh, offset and rail number for us. If you knew, hey, I, I just want to run a rail fence cipher on this, I just want to see how it would work, well, you can use tac tac units and then rail fence you could pass into it and then boom, it should just spit out the flag once it runs for us. Famous last words, right? Okay, cool. So there we go. That runs a little bit faster. Right now, I think he's still kind of confused up top uh, with what Caesar might be doing with it, or we're spiraling away from all the other things. But you could just as easily, if you didn't want to see that happen anymore, let me uh, zoom back in on this. We can see we do have 
these units running, we can run target list on the targets that we're particularly working with. It has a specific hash, but we could go ahead and target stop, and then I can tab to autocomplete that hash. Now that isn't running anymore. Now that's totally fine. So let me just CTFQ 62 or show 62 one more time so I can get that string. And now let's go ahead and target add uh, this run that, and that should be ideally a little bit faster because now it's not going to try and Caesar 255 or any other operations on all of that actual uh, challenge description. Now it's just kind of zoomed in on that flag itself. So, okay, that's how we could solve that with Katana. It was just a simple rail fence cipher, a little bit obscure in trying to track that down though. Uh, and same thing with those actual offset and rails number for that cipher. So we could brute force that, and Katana would try and massage it and try and track down where is a flag in that mess. And that's exactly what this is doing. Let me uh, see what we can see when I show that argument. I think it's target view. There it is, yeah. So that is the hash for that specific target. And now we can see it tried to at bash it. It tried to run it against Caesar. It tried to run it against Caesar 255. Tons and tons of things that are being created here. Base 85, base 58, blah, blah, blah. Let me search for our rail fence cipher. Okay, it tried a bunch of these. Why is it saving an artifact? Oh, that's because uh, base 58, it's as a child of rail fence. A lot of noise, a lot of nonsense, but anyway, Katana just ripped through it, and that's the whole point, is it was able to carve out a flag uh, and try everything for us. Okay, I talked a lot, and that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed just three challenges within RTCP, uh, Rice, T-Cat, Panda, CTF. We're getting a little bit... Going to get a little bit more done soon. I want to keep recording. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press that like button. If you didn't, press the dislike button twice so you know you hate it. I hated it that much. <laughs> I'm really bad at outros. All right, I'm just going to end the video. Bye, everybody.